a band of heavy wet snow causing issues across parts of central and eastern Kentucky. We'll track that out of town and show you what follows it up for the weekend just ahead. Today's snow kept emergency crews busy with cars sliding off the roads. And the widow of a cyclist is now suing the man accused of killing her husband. This is WQIT News at 5:30. Good evening to you. We saw another round of snow move into Kentucky today, and depending on where you were, you saw several inches or maybe nothing at all. And as quickly as it showed up, it looks like this winter weather is trying to make its way out of the bluegrass. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey joins us with more on some lingering snow tonight, Chris. Yeah, those snows across eastern Kentucky, especially in a narrow corridor, are still putting down some thumping snows. And the part of southeastern Kentucky just upgraded to a winter storm warning. That includes McGoffin, Morgan, Elliott, and Johnson County. So, Salyersville, West Liberty, Paintsville, and the Sandy Hook area with that winter storm warning. Now, you already have four to five inches on the ground. You hit winter storm warning criteria about three, two or three hours ago in a lot of cases. That's the corridor we've been focusing on for the greatest concentration of snow on the tune of three to six inches. I could see some six plus inch amounts coming out of a couple of spots here near West Liberty. Salyersville over toward Paintsville. Already have five and six inches on the ground in a few areas. Notice how that arcs its way back toward the north where the snows have now ended for the most part across Harrison County into Scott County, but a lot of reports up there of four or five inch totals. Temperatures rising into central Kentucky. Snows in Lexington melting away quickly. 36 degrees, yet 31 Jackson still in the low 30s across southeastern Kentucky. Into the metro, still snowing at least lightly, and especially once we get eastbound on 64 and south of the interstate toward the Mountain Parkway corridor. That's the area we're focusing on right now for an additional inch or two of thumping snows that can cause more travel issues, especially that Mountain Parkway area from West Liberty to Salyersville and up toward the north into the Moorhead area. Watch out, another one to two inches of snow. So, in a very small corridor today, guys. Some areas may pick up greater than six inches of snow, while less than 50 miles away, nothing showing up on the ground. Welcome to Kentucky weather in the month of March. We'll show you spring when I come back in a bit. Sounds good. Thanks, Chris. Today's snow caused problems for drivers in Bourbon County. Emergency crews have responded to crashes and cars running off of slick roads. WKYT's Monique Blair is live for us in Paris to continue our first alert weather coverage. Well, Jennifer, the snow is falling very lightly right now out here in Paris, and you can see behind me the roads are really clear, but even so, emergency crews tell me they have spent much of today responding to calls of cars sliding off the roads. Now, Bourbon County Sheriff Mark Matthews says it was because of this snow that crews responded to many cars sliding off the road throughout the day, but he says none of those people were seriously hurt. Sheriff Matthews says near Mount Sterling, a car did hit a tree, and the driver of that car was taken to the hospital, but their injuries are unknown. Plow trucks are keeping the main roads pretty clear right now, but emergency officials still ask that you slow down and take your time on the roads. I spoke with one driver who around 3 o'clock drove from Georgetown to Paris. He says his community didn't take any longer than it typically does, but he says it's hard to keep up with this always changing weather. The weather's crazy. I mean, one day we got 68 degrees, and another day it's 40 and snowing. So, you know, it is what it is. That's Kentucky weather for you. Now, although the roads are not covered in snow, they are still wet, so crews ask that you still stay safe while you're driving on them. I'm reporting live in Bourbon County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. Drivers in Morgan County also had to deal with slick conditions today. This is a picture of Highway 519 in West Liberty near Debbie Hill. You can see several vehicles there became stuck on a hill earlier today. Police say traffic in that area is now moving again. We're also getting a lot of photos sent to us on Facebook. This one is from Caitlin Goodwin in Ewing, Kentucky, showing a very snowy porch. This one from Penny Dalton shows three inches of snow in Bald Hill. And don't forget, you can get the latest weather forecasts online at WKYT.com or by downloading the WKYT News app for your iPhone or Android. 
The widow of a Lexington attorney who was hit and killed while out cycling last year has now filed a lawsuit against the man who is charged with his murder. Police say Odeline Paz Salvador was under the influence when he crashed into Hinkle on his bicycle in Scott County last May. WKYT's Hillary Thornton explains why Salvador's employer is also named in the lawsuit. The widow of Lexington attorney Mark Hinkle was inside the courtroom for a hearing in the lawsuit she has filed against her husband's accused killer. Attorneys for Odilon Paz Salvador saying his wife, Joy Paz, should not have to testify, citing spousal testimony privilege. Talk specifically about the fact that the wife can't be compelled to testify at all with regard to events that occurred after the date of the marriage. While acknowledging the rule, Hinkle's attorney saying Joy Paz could be questioned on topics not pertaining to events during her marriage. Hinkle's attorney then asking that Paz Salvador's wife at least show up for the deposition. I would have to be very careful about what I would ask uh, Joy. I would be very careful not to ask her about the communications between she and her husband. But she's not immune. There's not a cloak of immunity that she gets to hide from us entirely. The judge agreeing that Paz must go to the deposition, but that her attorneys can object to certain questioning. Also discussed at the hearing, various documents requested from Joy Paz, including her husband's immigration and employment records. There's cases on point that talk about tax records and other miscellaneous records. They're not created as the result of the marital relationship. Attorneys say they are still trying to identify Paz Salvador's employer, who is also named in this lawsuit, claiming they provided or sold the accused killer alcoholic beverages and facilitated him driving under the influence on the day of Hinkle's death, making them partially responsible. In Scott County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Paz Salvador is scheduled in court tomorrow for a hearing in his criminal case. A married couple appeared in court today accused of setting a home on fire that had been built by Habitat for Humanity. China and Angel Benitez are charged with arson for the fire last May at a home on East 2nd Street. That home belongs to China Benitez's mother, Frances Gaines Willoughby. She's been charged with conspiracy to commit arson. It breaks my heart that there are folks in the world who are so broken that they feel the need to do something so ugly with what is really a wonderful thing for a family and for our community as a whole. Fire investigators believe the couple set the fire in order to collect the insurance money. No plea was entered today. The pair will appear in court again along with Willoughby on March 23rd. There's now a reward in an arson investigation involving a parked police cruiser. Our county-by-county -county coverage at 5.30 begins in Clark County. Winchester police are working with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives to investigate the arson of a police cruiser early Monday morning. Well, this was actually a pool car. It was no longer in service to assigned to an officer. So we'll put those out um, and throughout the community, uh, and then our officers will go check on those vehicles. Winchester police and the ATF are offering a combined reward of $1,500 for information leading to an arrest and conviction. Police have made a second arrest in a pizza store robbery. Kimberly Ann Ellswick is charged with robbery for the holdup at the Domino's in Georgetown. The news graphic reports she was charged as an accomplice. Police arrested and charged Anthony Butler last week. Georgetown police are also trying to figure out if he robbed a nearby Dollar General as well as a store in Lexington. In Franklin County, an alert went out to parents today following a threat at a school. The sheriff's office alerted administrators about the threat at Elkhorn Middle School this morning. District officials say they stopped the student suspect before the child entered the building and no weapons were found. The student's parents were notified and the school is disciplining the student. The district says there was never a danger to the school or any students. This Saturday, all eyes will turn to Kentucky in the race for the Republican presidential nomination. This weekend's caucus is the focus of our good question today. Stephen is asking, when does the Democratic Party get to vote or caucus? I thought it was this Saturday, but learned only the Republicans will vote. When do the others get equal time? 
Well, Stephen, while Republicans will take part in a caucus this Saturday in Kentucky, Democrats have to wait till the May primary to cast their ballot. This year, the Republican Party chose to caucus so that U.S. Senator Rand Paul could run for president and also stay on the ballot to run for his U.S. Senate seat. Democrats will vote in the May 17th primary to vote on their choice for who they would like to see be the candidate to run for president. Now, coming up on WKYT News at 6, our Miranda Combs has more on understanding a caucus. She will break down the Republican caucus and what you need to know if you are planning on taking part this weekend. To submit a good question, all you have to do is send an email to goodquestion at wkyt.com. A proposed bill in Frankfurt would create a committee that's focused on school start times and how they affect tourism. I'm Bill Bryant. Marco Rubio won't be in Lexington tomorrow as first planned, and his presidential campaign has told us why and where you can find out the locations and the rules for Saturday's Republican caucus. Coming up on the bottom line. And then at 6, the Bevan administration is going after another Kentucky abortion clinic for practicing without a license. Get WKYT news and weather updates on Rewind 105.5. If you have questions about your on-the-job injury, visit ForThePeople.com for more information. Morgan & Morgan, For The People. If your child ever asks where do sandwiches come from, tell them the truth. Look them straight in the eyes and tell them, sandwiches come from Arby's. And if they ask where the loaded Italian and its many meats come from, kindly respond. What part of Arby's didn't you understand, Giuseppe? The loaded Italian sandwich. Arby's, we have the meats. Value City Furniture presents How to Buy the Perfect Mattress. First, ask yourself, are you avoiding shopping for a new mattress because you think mattress shopping is anything but a comfortable experience? Wake up and head to Value City Furniture. Our unique three-step process makes finding the perfect Serta or Beautyrest mattress so easy, you can almost do it in your sleep. Oh, wow. Perfect. And that's how to buy the perfect piece at Value City Furniture. Looking for the best boat your money can buy? Check out Tracker, Nitro, Sun Tracker, and Tahoe boats. Backed by the best factory warranties in the business. And Tracker is holding the line on pricing. Most 2016 boats are at or below last year's prices. Like the 2016 Tracker Protein 190 TX for $1,100 below the 2014 price. 2016 boats at 2015 prices. At the Bass Pro Shops Tracker Boating Center in Corbin. Philip Pratt, a proud grandfather, a loving and caring family man, a hardworking small business owner, someone who knows how to grow jobs and change the landscape in Frankfurt. Philip Pratt will hold government accountable responsibly, fight Obama's crippling government overreach on our agriculture economy, and preserve our Kentucky heritage in Owen and Scott County. On Tuesday, March 8th, vote Philip Pratt for state representative. What do these women have in common? They are the staff of Ageless Medical Weight Loss. They've lost a combined 1,300 pounds. The team at Ageless will understand your struggles and celebrate your victories. For a medically supervised, affordable weight loss solution, call Ageless today for a free consultation. Stay connected to the news that matters to you. Like WKYT on Facebook. Well, the stage will look pretty sparse tonight as the four remaining candidates for the Republican presidential nomination face off in their 11th debate. This latest matchup comes just two days before Kentucky's Republican caucus. Bill Bryant has more in today's Bottom Line. Good evening. The Kentucky Republican Presidential Caucus is Saturday, and there's a lot going on leading up to that vote. With a televised debate tonight, Florida Senator Marco Rubio is crunched for time. Rubio has canceled his only scheduled Kentucky appearance that had been set for tomorrow morning in Lexington. Rubio also scrapped campaign events in Louisiana, which holds a Saturday vote as well. Clearly, Rubio needs to win in his home state of Florida to have credibility going forward, and that primary is approaching 
March 15th, so he is shifting strategy. Rubio and Ted Cruz are expected to pile on Donald Trump during the Fox News debate tonight. But establishment Republicans who are nervous about Trump being the potential nominee got off a shot earlier today. 2012 Republican nominee Mitt Romney called Trump a phony and a fraud and said his promises are, quote, as worthless as a degree from Trump University. Romney said Trump would be disastrous as the Republican general election candidate and predicted Democrat Hillary Clinton would win. Trump has fired back today, calling Romney a stiff who didn't know what he was doing as the Republican nominee four years ago. Caucus locations are being prepared across Kentucky. Only Republicans who were registered on December 31st are eligible to vote Saturday between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. We have information about caucus locations and the rules on our website and we'll have full coverage throughout Saturday, including a WKYT News special report at 7 p.m. Saturday on the results. There will be four high-stakes special legislative elections in Kentucky next Tuesday. On this weekend's edition of Kentucky Newsmakers on Sunday, we'll have interviews with the candidates in the 62nd House District. Republican Philip Pratt and Democrat Chuck Tackett are both from Georgetown, and they're running to replace Ryan Quarles, who was elected State Agriculture Commissioner. Bill Bryant, WKYT. A bill has cleared the Kentucky Senate Education Committee that would create a new group to advise school districts on when to start their school year. The committee would consist of business and tourism officials along with educators who would make recommendations to local school boards. School boards would still decide when the year should start. Some school officials and lawmakers argue districts should be allowed to decide dates themselves. The bill now heads to the Senate for debate. Now, your hour-by-hour hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Old man winter will not go away. Snows across parts of central and eastern Kentucky out there today putting down some thumping snows. And in some cases, we're talking about localized five and six inch totals out there. Look at our live weather cams right now. Snowing again in Lexington. It's not sticking this go around. Temperatures are above, are above freezing. Florence, a little snow. London, not a whole lot today. Campton, Moorhead, big winners or losers, depending on your perspective there, picking up a ton of snow, upgraded to a winter storm warning for four counties, McGoffin, Morgan, Elliott, and Johnson counties. Winter weather advisory out for the rest of the areas you see shaded in the blue. Where it is snowing and still accumulating, temperature right at 32 degrees or a little better or a little lower than that. Most areas mid-30s across parts of central Kentucky. Defender Radar Network, the snow bands continue to increase across southeastern Kentucky. Getting in on a few flakes here, that I-75 corridor from London up into parts of Rockcastle County toward Richmond. Lexington, a little touch of some light snow east side of town, but it is the I-64 corridor down to the Mountain Parkway where we are seeing still a band of heavy snows that just keep on keeping on putting down another inch or two in some areas. You've already got four or five inches on the ground into parts of uh, several of the counties into southeastern or eastern Kentucky. We look to our west. As we go through tonight and tomorrow, things do get better, and they get better in a hurry. Temperatures will likely hover right around freezing or a little better for most of the overnight. And into the day tomorrow, we're going to see slow clearing taking place into the afternoon. 40 to 45 degrees across most of central and eastern Kentucky. By the time we hit tomorrow evening, temperatures are into the low 30s with a partly cloudy sky. One more little system dives in on that northwesterly flow as we go toward your Saturday. That will give us at least a chance for a shower or two. Temperatures will spike toward the low 50s just ahead of that front that will have very gusty winds as we go through that uh, period as well. Now we go through the evening on Saturday. Temperatures start to chill down a little bit. That's a brief chill down into Sunday morning with upper 20s to low 30s. Winds will at least briefly turn to the northwest to start out the day on Sunday. But quickly, late Sunday and into early next week, we're going to see the pattern flip on the proverbial dime. And what that means for us is that temperatures keep warming up. Much warmer into the afternoon on Sunday. Now we're talking about temperatures that take off. Upper 60s to around 70 on Monday. That's Springfield. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 70 to 75 for a high. Could be some thunderstorms beginning to uh, develop during that time 
as well. Speaking of thunderstorms, in what is a uh, busy time of the year, heading toward the spring severe weather season, severe storms preparedness. Tomorrow, join Jim Caldwell and myself over at Kroger on Richmond Road in Lexington. We've got Midland Weather Radios that uh, are at a discount price there. We're going to be programming those as well. So you can come out and you can get your county specifically programmed or counties that you want alerts for whenever watches or warnings are issued. Can I pay you to get me one? I've never had a weather, <laughs> weather radio. You know, I need one. You come out and see me tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow. We, we will hook you up during that time. <laughs> Quick look at traffic as we uh, see what's going on across the city of Lexington and surrounding areas. Not a whole lot is out there. That is certainly some good news, though. Eastern Kentucky roads are still, in some cases, slush and snow packed. We'll see if we can hook you up tomorrow. She wasn't right. asking for a freebie. She was willing I'll pay to you. pay you. All right, for I'll it. hook you up. I'll get you. <laughs> Chris, thank All you. Right. Oh, March Madness, I love it. It is here, and it's a good time to be on top of your game. Well, it is, and that's what the Lafayette Generals are. They talk about shooting the lights out, and the UK women's team getting things going in the SEC tournament against LSU. They cruise, but what about Michaela Epps? Sports is next. Tonight, scary news from the doctor. What? She wants to know if it's cancer. Just stay positive. Death, 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 death. Happy? A new mom. As soon as you get your life together, boom, something awful happens. Oh, you poor thing. You think you have your life together? Then. Hello, darling. The two broke girls catch their big break. Are you okay? I'm head over heels for Hollywood, baby. A new two broke girls after a new mom. CBS Tonight. We don't just serve any fish sandwich at Culver's. We serve wild-caught North Atlantic cod. This cod grows in a water that is cold, clean, and pristine, full of flavorful nutrients, and that comes through in the fish. This is the way we ship it to your restaurant. It's not pre-breaded. So not only do we use the highest quality cod, but we still hand batter it the old-fashioned way. That's remarkable. And we think we get the best fish filet sandwich because of that. This is the best fish sandwich in America. Welcome to Delicious. Clients come into the office. The government has said, no, I don't believe you. You're not disabled. The major problem with Social Security disability is that most people who sign up are denied at the initial level. If your claim's denied, don't give up. Call us immediately. We'll appeal your case. We can do an effective job of representing you that will get you the benefits that you deserve. Call Morgan, Collins, and Yeast. 1-800-55-WILDCAT. Sleep Outfitters and Tempur-Pedic announce an offer that will floor you. For a limited time, get up to half off the price of Tempur-Pedic floor models. That's right, up to 50% off Tempur-Pedic floor model sets while supplies last. Find Tempur-Pedic queen sets as low as $34 a month. Buy now and upgrade to an adjustable base for the same monthly payment. With 0% financing for 5 years or up to 50% off Tempur-Pedic floor models. Now's the time to get your Tempur-Pedic at Sleep Outfitters. Change is taking root in Frankfurt. We need a voice that'll be heard. Daniel Elliott is the conservative for Boyle and Casey counties. Dedicated to protect our God-given freedoms from Obama liberals, Daniel will ensure government is held accountable and our Kentucky values are protected. Daniel Elliott will fight government overreach that's crippled our economy. We need a strong voice. On Tuesday, March 8th, vote Daniel Elliott for state representative. Honey, would some Captain D's make you feel better? Yeah. When you love seafood this much... Back again? I hope it's just a clumsy phase. It's gotta be D's. Anything's worth it for our new homestyle flounder meal or double dozen shrimp. Also try our grilled menu featuring new Tuscan tilapia. For full meals starting at just $4.99, it's gotta be D's. You think you've got a good answer? How about your panties? This is too much information. Family Feud. One full hour starting at 7 on the CW Lexington. Stay connected to the news that matters to you. WKYT. Kentucky opening play in the women's SEC tournament and the Cats breeze by LSU this afternoon in Jacksonville. Kentucky dominated with a run of 14 unanswered points in the first quarter. This is how the first quarter ended. Michaela Epps on a run out. Now, here's how the first half came to an end. Janae Thompson driving for the lay-in. 
Cats were up 41-29 at the break. And here's how the third quarter ended. Thompson with a jumper. UK on top, 58-42. Cats advanced to play Florida tomorrow, 79-71. The only problem when Epps had to go to the bench in the second half. Christy Thomas has more on that. So the Cats were in complete control of this one. That is until Michaela Epps left the game with a banged up knee. With 4.52 to go in the fourth quarter, their leading scorer goes to the bench. The Cats were up 24, and the Tigers cut that lead to eight. I think it took us a second to adjust. Um, I didn't realize that Michaela um, had uh, re injured herself and she wouldn't be coming back. And um, I think some of the younger players were just in shock for a second. It was pretty hard on me, and I didn't like that I had to do that to my team. Um, but it's just something I plan on being here for a couple more days. So, you know, you just got to be precautionary. and You got to take care of yourself. But uh, at the end of the day, we got the win, and uh, I'll bounce back tomorrow. The Cats move on to take on Florida tomorrow at 2.30. The two teams have only met once this season, with Kentucky losing by six. In Jacksonville, Christy Thomas, WKYT. Christy, thanks. The 11th Region Boys Tournament continuing tonight in Richmond, but last night the Lafayette Generals were lighting it up. The Generals blasted Franklin County 76 42, and in the first half shot 70% from the floor, 10 of 14 from three point land. But this isn't the first time this season the Generals have come out and shot the ball well. Mercer County. Um, you know, we got a bunch of shooters, and when one goes in, it seems to be contagious. And I think that's what you saw in that first half. They came out ready to play, and luckily they fell tonight. It was fun. The way the ball was moving, everybody was scoring. I mean, that's all you want. Yeah, if we can get hot for this tournament, it'd be, be a good time. So. And because of the weather conditions and the road conditions along I-64, the 10th Region Boys Tournament at Montgomery County has been postponed tonight. The doubleheader is now scheduled uh, for Saturday afternoon starting at 1 o'clock and the semifinals delayed until Monday, March 7th. In the next half hour, Mark Stoops names a special teams coach, and we'll hear from the Cats' new defensive backs coach. Stay with us here on WKYT.